Hello, everyone. My name is Xu Jun Li. I work as a senior technical account manager at AWS. Today, I'm going to talk about the resource control policy feature. Resource control policy is an authorization policy managed in AWS organizations. It can be used to set the maximum available permissions for resources within your entire organization. Resource control policies, or RCPs, is a new type of IAM policy managed in AWS organizations that applies IAM access control policies to resources across multiple AWS accounts. Using RCPs, security administrators can apply permissions guardrails on resources centrally across their entire AWS environment without governing the IAM policies individually attached to each resource they own. As new resources are created, they become subject to the restrictions that administrators express in their RCPs. RCPs are configured and managed centrally in AWS organizations. They can be attached to the root, an OU, or a specific account. Permissions guardrails defined in the RCPs are then enforced on all corresponding resources in the attached scope. Currently, RCPs support a subset of services, including S3, SQS, STS, Secret Manager, and KMS. You can manage RCPs from the management account of your organization or from the delegated administrator account. To understand what RCPs can do for you, let's look at an example use case. Let's say that you have some S3 buckets. You would like to make sure that only principals in your own organization can access your buckets. To address this requirement, before the introduction of RCP, you could use resource-based policy. Security administrators could use an automation to add restrictions to resource-based policies when new buckets are created or their policies are changed. The example in the slide showed parts of a resource-based policy where the security administrator added a deny statement to achieve the requirement, so that even if developers accidentally added over-permissive policies that grant access to external principles for this bucket, those external principles are still denied access. In that policy, you have a deny statement and use conditions like AWS principal org ID to protect the resource from identities outside of your organization. The example denies access unless it is from identities in your own organization or AWS services like CloudTrail. Such a policy works. However, such a policy has to be defined on every single bucket that needs such a protection. Obviously, this will not work in scale for a large organization with many such resources. This is where RCPs come and help to address that requirement in a much more scalable and efficient manner. In the slide, I'm showing two policies. One is a resource-based policy attached to the bucket, the white box on the left. It grants access to certain principles, which could be principles outside of your organization. On the right, you see a resource control policy that is attached to the organization that includes the account that the S3 bucket resides in. RCPs will enable central administration over the maximum permissions on AWS resources. They are permissions guardrails. They don't grant permissions, but rather set the maximum boundary around possible access to resources. As you can see in the slide, the syntax of a resource control policy is similar to resource-based policy. The difference is it is now enforced centrally in our organization. And once enforced, even if individual accounts or resources have defined overly permissive resource-based policy, for example, the resource-based policy for the bucket grants access to an external principle, access is still denied by the resource control policies. 
RCPs will serve as a preventive control that will eliminate that need to manage restrictions on the individual resource basis. Resource-based policy can still be useful for data owners to grant access based on application requirements. They can be used to define fine-grained access controls based on specific application use cases, but they are still bound by the permissions guardrails defined in the RCPs. You might already know SCP, Service Control Policy, which is another type of policy that can be used to centrally control permissions on organizations' levels, like the whole organization, organization unit, or account. So what is the difference? Service control policies allow you to limit the permissions granted to principles within your organization, such as AWS IAM roles. By constraining these permissions centrally within organizations, you can restrict access to AWS services, specific resources, and even under what conditions principles can make requests across multiple AWS accounts. But you can only use it to define permissions guardrails for your own principles, allowing or denying their access to resources inside or outside of your organization. You cannot use it to control access to your resources by principles outside of your organization. Like shown in the picture, a row in another account on the right in the picture could possibly access your bucket if your bucket is set up improperly. Your SCP will not help in this case. RCPs are complementary to service control policies that can help address that problem. Resource control policies can apply IAM permissions guardrails to all resources across multiple AWS accounts in your organization. As shown in the picture, with RCP, you can now control whether a row in an account outside of your organization is able to access your S3 bucket, which your SCP is not able to. SCPs and RCPs cover some common ground where either SCPs or RCPs could work. For example, when limiting principles in your own organization to access resources in your organization. Selecting which type of policy to use will depend on the security objectives you are pursuing. As SCP is identity-oriented and RCP resource-oriented, in general, if you want to enforce permissions on identities, use SCPs, while if you want to enforce permissions on resources, use RCPs. In an example where you want to enforce an S3 bucket can only be accessed through TRS, you might want to consider using RCPs if you want to protect the resources no matter the accesses from principles in your organization or outside. An advice for using RCP is that, similar to SCP, do not apply RCPs without first evaluating impact on the resources of the corresponding accounts. Overly restrictive RCPs might inadvertently disrupt existing configurations, for example, denying access that other people might have granted explicitly on purpose. So do evaluate impact on existing resources before associating an RCP to an account. Now let me show you where to enable and configure RCP and how RCP protects your resources using S3 buckets as an example. Resource control policies are managed in the service AWS organizations. On the screen, I'm showing you my sample organization with a structure like this. I have a management account, and I have a couple of OUs. I have a development, I have protection, and a few accounts in those OUs. Resource control policies can be enabled via SDK, command line, or directly on the console. Let's do that on the console. Go to policies. You see a list of different policy types managed by AWS organizations. You might be using some of them already, like service control policies. 
So to enable resource control policies, click that one and simply click the button to enable it. So now resource control policy has been enabled. You see here, a policy is automatically created and associated for us. This policy is called RCP full AWS access. If you have been using service control policies before, this looks very familiar to you. So this default policy allows everyone to access everything, basically. If you look at the targets that has been associated with this policy, we see the whole organization is now associated with this default RCP. If we go back to look at the policy itself, the way that is it defined using wildcards on principal action and resource might look scary to you. You might be thinking, am I giving everyone access to everything? Actually, you are not. As we talked about earlier, resource control policies do not grant permissions. They define a maximum boundary around possible access to resources. By the way, you cannot delete this AWS managed policy or detach it, but you can define your own resource control policies as permissions guardrails. Now let's see RCPs in action. Let's say that you have a development team that is developing applications. They want their application to access an S3 bucket in this production account. I have another browser tab open where I have logged in as one of the development team members. In the S3 service, we see a couple of S3 buckets. Let's say that this bucket, customer marketing data, I want to allow my application, which is running in perhaps in another account to access the data here. In order to do that, I will define a policy under permissions here. So let's edit the bucket policy. I put in the policy. The intention here is that this policy will grant my application running in another account to be able to do all the S3 actions on anything in my bucket. Let's say that I accidentally put in an account ID that actually not in my organization. So instead of the correct account ID where my application runs, I put in some account ID that is not in my organization. Let's save changes. I have a third browser tab open here where I have logged in to the account which the developer accidentally put into that policy. As you might have expected, we could access that S3 bucket. Let's try this list objects command. As you can see, I can see the content of that S3 bucket. If we want, we can also download the sensitive information inside that S3 bucket. Security administrators do not want this to happen. With resource control policies, security administrators can prevent this from happening whether that bucket policy, which is one type of resource-based policy, was defined accidentally or on purpose. Let's go back to the security administrator's view. To prevent that unintended access to happen, let's create a resource control policy. We name it denying S3 access from external org. In the policy editor, on the right, you see the list of services that currently support resource control policy. Let's pick S3, all actions. For the resource element, let's add all resources. The core part of this resource control policy is the condition we want to deny access to S3 buckets from all principles outside of our organization. Let's add a condition. The condition key that we would like to use is AWS principal org ID. 
let's put in the organization ID of our own org. Add condition. Now we have a policy where we are denying access to all S3 actions on all resources unless the principal making the request has a principal org ID that is equal to ours. Note that we have got a warning here. So the warning says that resource control policies could also impact service principles to access our resources. In this case, service principles like CloudTrail might be forbidden from access to the S3 buckets. So let's add a condition so that we can prevent that. The condition key that we would like to use is principal is AWS service. Let's put in false. Add condition. Now that if service principles like CloudTrail would like to access the buckets, such a policy would allow that. Let's create this policy. Now that we have the policy, the next step to do is to attach the policy to the scope where you want this policy to apply. You could attach the policy to the root of the org, an OU, or a particular account. Let's say that in our case, we want to attach it to the production OU, where those S3 buckets we want to protect resides. Attach policy. Now let's go back to the terminal session where we did the unintended access earlier. Let's run that same S3 command again. Now you see access denied. If we go back to the S3 bucket, the bucket policy itself still allows access, but it is the permissions guardrails that we have defined in that resource control policy worked protecting our S3 bucket. RCPs as a new authorization policy supported by AWS organizations provide confidence to the central governance and the security teams that access to resources within their AWS accounts conforms to their organization's access control guidelines. When you apply RCPs in your organization, use them as a permissions guardrails on organization, OU, and account levels. An RCP defines maximum permissions or set limits on the actions that identities can take on resources in your organization. They do not grant permissions. Use identity-based policies to IAM users or roles or resource-based policies to resources in your accounts to actually grant permissions. Also note that RCPs do not apply on resources in a management account and it does not apply on service-linked roles. RCP today is only supported by a subset of services. Please check AWS documentation for latest list of services that support RCP. In this session, you have looked at how RCPs can help you prevent unintended access to resources which is one of the security objectives pursued by enterprises building a data parameter on AWS. A data parameter is a set of permissions guardrails in your AWS environment you use to help ensure that only your trusted identities are accessing trusted resources from expected networks. RCPs, along with SCPs, can help you to centrally establish a data parameter across your AWS environment and prevent unintended access at scale. Scan the QR code or use the link on the screen to know more about data parameter solutions. This concludes my introduction of the resource control policies. Thank you for your time.